JJ and Lions on WEEI. Yeah. You know, dispensaries have kind of messed up that whole dead vibe, right? KJ and Lions, WEEI. Good Sunday to you, 617-779-7937, text line 37937. We're about a minute away from the Lions Den. Nico, what do you have on the text line? So we got one texter here who says, there is no curse, it's just poor decisions. We've all made poor decisions in our lives, and the Red Sox poor decisions are being magnified. Okay, I'll put it in perspective. Let's say you date the wrong girl, and then you go to a doctor and you find out the wrong thing has happened to you. It, it, it it's a curse. I, 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 John, is it not a curse? Like it literally traces back to when Mookie. Because you remember the narrative. Oh, he wants too much money. He doesn't want to be here. All these different things. And then when they asked him when he came back, he says, "You'll have to ask. You have to ask management about that." And then what was the next picture you saw at the? Remember the famous picture after the Dodgers series? It's Verdugo and Heim Bloom talking one on one out in the outfield. Like all of this is tied back to one guy. It's Why do you have to go to the doctor for pills and maybe tied to that one girl? I was just thinking off air, like, I, I think since they traded Mookie Betts, we've had about two, maybe three months total of fun baseball. Like, like October of 2021, I think June of last year, which is when they beat the Braves in that two-game series, they swept June them. Like, of tw- July of 2021. July yeah. of 2021. October of 21 and, like, June of last year. Like, that's literally, I mean, seriously. Like, they traded the guy in January of 2020. Since then, we've had three fun months of baseball, and we got to have a pandemic too. Not saying that's the Mookie. Well, that's not that's not a Mookie. But we uh, we had three fun months of baseball. Like, and I think it does again. I think it ties to it. And then like Trevor's story. And you think about it, like you you sign story. You got you're not winning. All of a sudden, then Bogarts wants to leave. You know, Evaldi doesn't stick around because you issues with Verdugo and Cora. uh, Yeah, like. Jeter Downs doesn't pan out. Remember the yeah. big who? Reese McGuire is now better than Connor Wong. The other, the other piece of that trade, like it's Mookie's playing short now. This and this payroll, have yeah. stop short. Oh, this God. payroll flexibility you earned trading Mookie. You signed Lucas Giolito, who's hurt. Like I mean, like what are we? It, it real to me. Like a lot of it. Like I mentioned earlier, that original sin was firing Dombrowski, and a lot of this stuff traces back to that and trading Mookie. I mean, we're talking about three fun months total of baseball since they traded the guy. See, but it, it would be a different thing if Mookie Betts was an acquisition that came here and then decided to leave. I think yeah. that's one thing. Oh, I agree with that, yeah. But when you grow something yourself, you have to keep some of the crops for yourself. Like, Devers is the last one standing, and I'll say this out loud. I'm concerned that he's not happy. That's what that ground ball, that missed ground ball felt like to me yesterday. Kind of like, man, I'm just out here myself, right? And whatever goes wrong or whatever goes wrong, even though things are right right now, because coming up next hour in Would You Rather, you'll be shocked that the Red Sox could end up with 20 wins by the end of the by the end of April. It's a real possibility, but it doesn't feel like all this good feeling that's happening right now is sustainable. And I do kind of feel for Rafi Devers because he's literally like the last man standing. Yeah, well, and that's it's a funny thing you say that because you look at that team that won the 2018 World Series. They went out and got sale. They went out and got price. But a lot of their position players, homegrown guys, like right. Vasquez is another guy in that, Jackie Bradley Jr. And the only guy left standing and six years ago is Devers. Only guy left standing. Only and guy. Probably, what, the third best player, two of the group, like Mookie being the best, Xander being the second best. So the only guy left is the third best player. So it almost feels like, hey, if Rafi and Ben Attendee is another here. one. Sorry to cut you off, but that's another no, one. No, it's probably really fine because it's like, all right, Vasquez, you felt like a piece of the, the – like a heart of the team was taken out when he was let go, right? Remember in Houston yeah. where he's standing there, he finds out he's being traded like, like right there as they're talking to him. And, and so you, you feel like there's been these different moves that have been this wave effect. But I think the first rock that was thrown into the, into the pond, if you will, and started to ripple – was not bringing Mookie back because if you still had Mookie here, if Xander was gone, it wouldn't be as painful right now. And hell, <laughs> Mookie would be the shortstop probably, okay? But it's just Xander, uh, it's just Devers by himself. Xander's gone. Xander's replacement really hasn't been here. Mookie's had several replacements. In fact, the best replacement out of them all is now with the Yankees. And it, <laughs> yeah. how is that not a curse? 
It's the Mookie Malays, man. I'm making it. I, a thing. I like, I like the curse of Mookie. Yeah, Mookie Malays. I, I, that sounds like Mookie Mayonnaise, and that doesn't sound good. Oh, that sounds terrible. All right, yeah. next we'll talk Celtics and the end of an era coming up with, with, with Mike Gorman. But right now it's time for. See the one about lions? Yeah, yeah. Can't lose to this guy. King of the jungle. <laughs> John, the first one involves the green team. Will they roar in their last week of the season or kind of take their foot off the brake heading into the playoffs? So I think they're going to actually roar into it. And the reason I say that is Tatum had a great quote uh, last week in a press conference about not skipping any steps. And last year's team, he felt it tried to skip some steps to get back to the finals. I'm yeah, not like saying that they're the going to be conference. they're not going to be playing Tatum 35 or 40 minutes every night, but I think they're still going to have at least a couple games here before the end of the year where they keep their foot on the gas. I think it depends on which Celtics are in there, right? I, so yes to roaring, but I don't want it from Tatum and Brown and, and Holiday. I want to see some of these bench players really start to ramp things up because there are concerns I still have. Right, Peyton Pritchard has not proven anything to me until we get to this year's playoffs. Not saying there hasn't been improvement. I like how Joe Mazzulla has leaned on him a little more, but we really want Christmas Day doesn't come for Peyton Pritchard until we get to the playoffs. So I'm with you. They roar. All right, next one. Will the Red Sox roar in their first homestand against Baltimore, the Angels in Cleveland, or meow at Fenway? Yeah, I'm looking at Meow here. Baltimore's loaded, and Cleveland's seven and two right now. They're really good. Like, I, I, if they just make this pretty much an even home stand, I'll be happy. This is a, the schedule's getting a little bit tougher now. I'm gonna say they're gonna roar on their first home stand. Here why? There's just been so much emotional tug and pull between the fans and the team this year. They're coming back opening day on Tuesday, and already the second most important person on the team is on the DL. So. Th- the people who are going to be there are going to give the most energy at Fenway to probably make it at least a 500 split if they possibly can, or maybe even if they're just one game under 500 after this these three, this this home stand. I think that would be okay. A meow would look like, oh my gosh, they got swept. They won one. They got swept. That would be the problem. All right, give me a one team in the East, John, that you feel could roar against the Celtics, and one that can meow. Yeah, the, so the, the one that I'm concerned about that would roar is Philly. And I know that sounds weird because Philly traditionally sucks in the playoffs and the Celtics own them. They're, if Embiid's back healthy, which, like, he's, you know, I know he's come back, but if he's fully healthy in the playoffs, him with Maxi, that was a different animal earlier this year than anything we've seen from Philly over the past five years. You said NML. And yeah. who would be someone you think would meow you know, against I, the Celtics? I think it's the in-season tournament champion Pacers. I, I think if they got them in a first-round series, the Celtics would win in five, and three of those four wins wouldn't be close. If there's a team I would say be careful of them roaring against the Celtics, it would be Milwaukee. If Milwaukee can just get themselves to a seven-game series against the Celtics, you just don't know what will happen when you've got Middleton, when you've got... Giannis, when you've got Dame Lillard, when you've got Portis, and what also uh, the old man Lopez can do. Like, those are things that you can, are concerned about, and these guys are champions, and of course Lillard's looking for one. And then you've got ancillary pair players like like Jay, Jay Crowder. You, you He's only on Milwaukee to try and be a pebble in Jason Tatum's shoe. Not to score, but to just be a headache and defend. That would be the team that I would be concerned that would roar against the Celtics, and the team that I would think that would meow against the Celtics? The Milwaukee Bucks because Doc Rivers is there. So there you go. The Lions Den. Uh, John feels good about the Celtics. Not so much about the Red Sox. And thinks that the Pacers could be pretty weak. And yet Philly strong. The second hour of KJ and Lions. Next, we talk more Celtics here on WEEI. Good Sunday to you.